If you want to turn your game from looking like this to something more like this, then max out every single graphic setting and be done with everything and make sure you have a 4090. But if you're like most people and don't have a 4090 and you want to have the maximum FPS for the best in-game performance, get your screenshot fingers ready because we're about to make Modern Warfare 2 look and feel amazing. These settings are for any PC players who play on controller or keyboard and mouse. And before you ask it, yes, we will also be releasing our Keybinds video and likely do a movement tutorial as well. So if any of this interests you, double check and make sure you are subscribed with notifications turned on. According to NVIDIA, Call of Duty's graphics settings for literally everything give a very minimal hit to FPS. Probably the most striking ones are particle lighting when you have it ultra versus off. Again, not too much of a difference, but put that in contrast with screen to space reflections, where you can see when it's off, you don't see the car reflection, but with it on, you see how it reflects off of the rain and the puddles on the ground. Even ambient occlusion, if you set it to both, only gives a very minimal hit on your FPS. If you're like me and have no idea what ambient occlusion stands for, here's a handy little guide. We have a whole bunch of people here, and this is with ambient occlusion off. With it on, we have a little bit finer detail in between different objects as they're stacked upon each other, or if they occlude each other. Now, if we're looking at a cinematic or a movie, obviously having something like this would be great. But in high motion, first person shooter type of gameplay, you really won't notice it in real world situations. Here's an example of anti-aliasing, which I would argue looks better to me with it off for Call of Duty because it has an additional sharpened look. But regardless of how you feel, according to Nvidia, anti-aliasing does not give you that much of a hit on performance. And if you go through this post, Nvidia says the same thing for every single graphic setting. And so I took all of NVIDIA's data and spent days testing it for you. And I turned everything to high, I turned everything to medium, and I gave a little bit of a mixture of both. But what we found is that if we use NVIDIA's recommended settings, your FPS takes a massive hit because every single one of those settings all add up, resulting in beautiful gameplay, but very low FPS. In fact, during gunfights, it was the most noticeable as I dropped more than 30 frames for most 1v1s. And if you're thinking, well, Thin, how does this really make too much sense? You have graphics and you have bullets but if you're just fighting, there's not too much being processed. And so after doing a little bit more research, gunshot calculations are processed by the rate of fire for automatic weapons. It's also the same for single fire weapons, but most weapons in Call of Duty are full auto. And so your PC or console is struggling to decide between calculating how many bullets to put on the enemy versus how many pebbles to render on the floor versus how many reflections to handle from the sun versus how much detail in that grenade explosion. And so I'm going to save you a whole bunch of time. Every single one of these settings just turn it low or off and this is the reason why amd has this setting that they've added called fidelity fx cast and what this does is basically gives the entirety of your picture a sharpened look and you can have all of your settings lower off and with this turned on the game looks pretty good now back in your display tab you want to make sure that you are in full screen exclusive for this guide i will be having it in full screen borderless so that i can alt tab and if you are streaming on a single pc then this is probably more convenient that being said i tested both both of these extensively and full screen exclusive gives you at least 10% better FPS. Obviously I'm on an RTX 3080 Ti and my monitor is this Dell model playing at 1440p. All of these settings here, you wanna make sure this one's auto, V-Sync and V-Sync menus are both off. And your custom frame rate limit, this is completely up to you. For this test, we had ours set to 240, but since my screen only goes to 165, I'll probably leave mine around 180 so it, it'll stay locked there. There's arguments both for and against this. So if you're on the fence, just set it to your monitor monitor's maximum, which for most people will be 144, 165, or in some cases, 240. If you have any sort of issues with your shaders, this is where you restart them. Display gamma, you want to leave right here. Follow all sort of brightness instructions. And towards the end of the video, I'll show you my custom NVIDIA brightness settings that will make your game look incredible. The rest of these settings, just make sure they're off and HDR set to auto. The only other changes I would make are having your video memory scale set to as high as possible, depending on how many things your GPU is doing. And last but not least, make sure your bullet impact packs and sprays are turned on every other setting however off low if you scroll down to the bottom i do have nvidia reflex low latency turned on because that does help a little bit you don't really need on plus boost because it can introduce latency i found that on works the best but these depth of field blur weapon motion world all this stuff 
turn that off. Same with the film grain, zero it out. When you tab over to view, I have my FOV set to 120 and ADS field of view. Make sure this is set to affected because it lowers your visual recoil, which is huge. Weapon field of view is also another one that looks kind of cool. I have that one set to wide to give me a little bit more space around my weapon and to reduce all this extraneous camera movement, just turn this to the lowest setting possible. Now with all these settings, you can see that I get very close to 240 FPS and that's at 1440p and I don't even have a 4090. Additionally, the game feels amazingly smooth and it's still very enjoyable to watch. Now, all of this amazing frame rate and performance wouldn't be possible without my trusty Zydax PC. We've been working with them for years and the reason why they're my go-to is because they were the first in the industry to offer an unparalleled lifetime warranty. I've met the team in person and they're a great bunch of gamers who pay all of their employees a living wage in Utah. So if you're in the market, go to Zydex.com slash thin and make sure to use code thin to save a little bit of money on your next build. And finally, just as I promised earlier, this is my NVIDIA control panel, which shows all of my secret sauce for making the colors more vibrant and the lighting just a little bit more sharp. I have my brightness turned up ever so slightly, contrast to 80. Gamma is another form of artificial light. I have that just popped up ever so slightly. And digital vibrance, I have that way up here at 75. If you learned something or if any of these settings helped you, please subscribe for more content because we got a whole bunch more coming for both Modern Warfare 2 as well as Warzone 2.